Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show. I got something here that I want to show you guys. Let's talk about this William Optics 110 millimeter ED. It's a Magrez a refractor, and let's let's take a look at it. Let's uh, welcome back to the show. So yeah, so uh, let's take a look at this guy. It's kind of cute. It's kind of stubby. So this is a William Optics. Now I have to say I've never owned a William Optics before. So this will be the first time. Actually, guys, I wanted to just show you. I'm trying out this uh, wireless microphone. So one part of the Bluetooth is on my iPhone 13 Pro there and then I have this here and um, let's see if this makes a difference because a lot of times when I'm outside and then I don't know if you guys have noticed cars come and go or something or people with music and it kind of interrupts or you can hear them or if I make the volume go up and when I edit it I'm also making the background noise so maybe this catching me is going to have a better sound for you guys and um, that's where I appreciate my members um, because it allows me to put a couple bucks into the channel and um, you know because really I'm not making that much of the AdSense at all uh, so uh, the members forum part um, or the members video part is hopefully I I'm hoping will help contribute to buying some stuff that makes it easier for you guys to view and hear me. Anyway, let's get back to this, okay? So this now is the 110 Magrez ED, and it opens up to there. Um, so a 110 millimeter, you know, is not big, but it's not too small. It's fitting right in the category, again, I've said it a hundred times, where I think a nice refractor is, is between like the four inch to the five inch. Yes, I use bigger, but after the five inch is where it becomes really big and heavy and you're gonna need a big mount, okay? Under four inch, you can use under four inch on planetary stuff, but I find after the Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus, um, it's a little bit small for anything after that. Um, maybe when Mars is near its opposition, it's okay as well. But um, so that's where I always have said, I think the four inch to five inch, depending on what you feel, uh, how big you want to go. But I think that's where the sweet spot is for most people. So this being 110 millimeter falls right in the size of 4.33, which is a decent size. Now this one here, I like how the the dew shield shrinks for ultra portable. This could, I think this could probably go in an airplane. Now it says it's about 10 pounds. Uh, so which is not that heavy. Why don't I go try it and see? But before I do, it has a nice two and a half, I believe this is a two and a half inch uh, focuser. And this is a fully rotatable one, which is what most people would expect of something of this caliber to be. Um, it is 10 to 1 dual speed Crayford focuser, and I think it's actually a step above most. Um, this is not a moonlight or uh, a feather touch, but um, overall, I would say the William Optics name brand, as far as quality, is not the top tier. It's like the mid tier. Better than the average stuff, like the Celestron Mead, Skywatcher, and this. This is now in a step above. Uh, but it's not as high as like a Takahashi Astrophysics TMB or Tech or something like that. But it uh, is a bit above the normal stuff. They do come in three colors. And that's one thing where I think William Optics is kind of neat. It might cost them more money to produce, but they have the gold trim. And then they have a blue trim and a red trim. So basically there's three different uh, trims that you can get it, whichever one you like, I guess. Um, sometimes people 
the blue and the red are, are very flashy and some people don't want to be flashy. So uh, some people get just the gold trim because it's it's not as flashy or as loud as the other ones. But if you want to be a little loud and flashy, go ahead. I kind of like the red and blue. They're kind of nice. It stands out, uh, which is nice. But uh, maybe it costs them a little more to have three different versions of the same scope uh, type of thing. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, this one's coming with a two-inch diagonal rings and kind of like an Antares Vixen bar. And um, let me show you before I weigh it the front lens so you guys can see it. So I don't know if that light is showing. Okay, there we go. That's what it's a nice ED doublet. So I don't know if this is going to be a true APO. And the reason is it's very short and wide. It's, uh, I believe it's F5.95. So almost just shy of F6. So which means really this was made for the imagers. And imaging has been, you know, really big in the hobby for the last uh, 10 years, uh, 15 years, it's blown up. You know what I mean? Because you could just capture so much more than our eye can see. Um, so F5.95 uh, is really an imager scope, but probably you should be able to do some visual uh, with it, some planetary work, but being so short and it's a doublet, might have a little bit of false color, a little bit of fringing, but again, it depends how well they made it, how well they polished, figured that lens, uh, and what type of mating element they used. Uh, I've seen a doublet with 51 glass that was kind of horrible, and I have seen a doublet 51 glass where they use that lithanium mating glass, and then that was much, much better. So it just depends how you kind of make it, and then it also depends how long you make it too. Of course, going longer, you can correct it more with more simpler glass. Really well made. It feels solid. Again, this guy could probably go on a plane. And a 110 millimeter or 4.33 inch diameter should be able to collect a decent enough um, of light for you to do whatever you want to do. Um, and being that it's a little bit less than F6, it's already really wide, but I also believe they do make a flattener corrector for this guy. Well, it's actually for the 80s, 90s, and the 110, if it's all of them. And I don't know 100% what it takes it down to. My guess it is it probably takes it down to a 4.5 type of thing, which is really wide as well. But anyway, let's go see if the manual was right and it's 9.9 uh, .9 pounds, let's just say 10 pounds and uh, see where we're at. Yeah, I know what you guys are gonna say. Like, hey Joe, isn't it time you get into a digital or a nice fancy weight uh, or scale? You know what, I really don't care for the scale. Uh, I almost never weigh myself ever. So it is what it is. It's a, uh, okay, exactly 10 and a half pounds. Now, probably because uh, a diagonal doesn't normally come with it. Uh, so it just depends on that and how big your rings are. But uh, 10 and a half pounds, I said it's 9.9, .9, which is 10, basically. Comes with a nice aluminum case. Uh, everything fits in it exactly. Uh, so it's just good that you can carry it all. Uh, now, you probably don't need a huge mount for this guy. Anything like probably, well, even a CG4, if you guys want to put it on, which is a 20 pound uh, capability, should easily ha handle this because it's half the weight. Now maybe for imaging, you want to probably go at least a CG5 type of mount or an EQ5 type of mount, which is a 25 payload. So you're actually above that 50 pound once you put your imaging gear on. Of course, bigger is better too. Like an AVX, maybe the HEQ5, that type. Then you're way beyond the capability and you don't have to worry about uh, flexure, a vibration, or anything like that. But whatever you guys want to use it on, fine too. I guess um, being this short and wide, why not use it on something like a Twilight, uh, Explore Scientific that is, and then maybe use it for the daytime. A little bit heavy for daytime use, but not unwielding. It, it's uh, not too heavy, I guess. Uh, I've used bigger on daytime. Uh, daytime's not my forte, per se. But it's nice if you have something that can do it 
and you see something out there that you want to look, why not? Should probably produce a big field of view. Um, that's about it, guys. That's it for this episode. So let's uh, try on the next episode. Tr let's try this guy on Saturn uh, and see uh, how it looks visually. Again, it's more of an imaging. I would say at least a three-quarters imaging. You could probably do some visual. It's not a planetary scope per se. It's probably made for wide field views of deep sky stuff, but probably can handle some uh, planetary work or high power as well. So um, let's try it on maybe Saturn. Why not try it if I get home early enough as well? Try it on some daytime stuff and just give it a go and just check it out. Since it's my first William Optics, um, it would be nice to check it out. Anyway, guys, if you know anybody getting in the hobby uh, or if you know anybody maybe that's wanting some information on this particular telescope, share my link with them, my channel with them. If you guys are on the forums and uh, someone's asking about a video I have or a question that I've done, please share my um, channel with them. And uh, I also do have now, well, for several months now, members only video. And I put it as cheap, as low as possible. So it's only 99 cents. I'm putting one video up and I'm also putting your name in the description. And again, that's also making the channel grow by me uh, getting a few bucks and I can purchase some of these little gadgets like this uh, Bluetooth microphone, um, you know, maybe lighting, uh, maybe stuff like this where I can show you guys. So every little bit helps, of course, with our, you know, with these small channels that actually don't make much off YouTube yet. So if, uh, if you want to join, I'd appreciate it. But anyway, guys, why not you? Why not me? Joe Jaguar out.